Hello, everyone, and welcome to another enchanted evening at twitch.tv slash dance next. The only place on the internet that you can get Twitch and Dance Next in the same in the same place at the same time. It's true. The rumors are true. Tetsido, hello, and Gretz on first. Only one person can claim first today. Be here when the stream starts for a shot at the title. Tetsido, I you know, I do want to get one of the things I want to do in 2022 is to get that first thing to have like some special effect or something. That'd be cool, right? I think we can do that. Alright, where were we? Oh yeah, we're at the the castle. You know, I should probably wait for some people to get here, though, so let's just go kill some trash for a minute while we wait. Uh, yeah, we'll go kill some pigs for some... For some vials real quick, I guess, while we wait for people to file in. They drop a lot of vials. Maybe we'll get some gems. You never know! Oh, man. Murgos. Today we're going to start off with Castle Forsaken Castle Kanehurst, an optional challenging area in the base game. And then we're going to head to the DLC. Where we're at Ludwig. You don't want to know about Ludwig. He is a whole deal. If you've never fought Ludwig before, I won't ruin this, uh, the surprise. But let me tell you, he gets pretty wild in Phase 2, like so many other From Software bosses. Uh, in fact, you know, they included the From Software signature item in the fight, which is something that's been in the games all the way since Kingsfield. Stadnik asks for feedback on the podcast, but you don't want to hurt his feelings. Hurt them! That that feedback is only valuable if you're honest, Uh And I say that, like, I would want to know if there was something you didn't like about something here. The, the reason people ask for feedback is because they want feedback, not because they want you to, you know, listen. You should, of course, say nice things about, about people and things, but feedback is only valuable when it is honest. That doesn't mean you need to be mean about it, but if you've got, if you've got thoughts and opinions about what needs to be different, or things that you'd like to see, by all means, be honest. Be kind, but be honest. Otherwise, feedback isn't useful. If ever that's that's you know that's when you get George Lucas, right? Everyone's just like, oh, that's great, George. And then you end up with Jar Jar Binks and and the prequels, and you can. There's a chari whatever you want to say to see. I'm sure there's a charitable a charitable way to do it. Now that may take some more work to do it, but I guarantee it's doable. Here's a tip: Don't start off your, your kind. Don't start off the message with "Hey, numb nuts." <laughs> the problem is, like, good actionable feedback is always more valuable than just everything is awesome. If you do not feel that everything is awesome, if you feel like everything is awesome, then yes, by all means, give that feedback. Hey, Croc, what up? But if there's stuff that isn't awesome that you want to relay, then you should. It's more valuable to the creator, I think. Again, there's a right way to do things and a wrong way to do things. Like, you know, leaving me a YouTube comment that says, Hey, Dan, you're terrible, you're stupid, and uh, I hate you. That's not constructive criticism. Don't do that. Uh, Dr. Mono, thank you for enabling Lurk Mode. Uh, Detective Basil, I'm well aware. That's why I'm relaying it. I'm re there is there is such a thing as valuable, constructive feedback. And when people ask for feedback, they want the feedback as feedback. They don't want everything is good, everything is great. I mean, I, I guess if that's... <laughs> they don't. They really don't. They're not... That when I ask you, like, you know, what I could fix in the stream, I don't want you to tell me, Dan, everything is amazing. That's not useful information for me. So, in that same fashion, uh, when Alex has sourced some feedback, again, you don't need to be a jerk about it, but, but do relay what you feel the issues are, if there are issues. Anyway. 
I'm my most viewed streamer. Everything is amazing. See, but that's, of course. And I and I and I challenge, and I'm I'm glad for that. But if if everything wasn't I'm amazing, thinking, I'd like to hear about it. I hesitate. If I was sourcing feedback, I'm not sourcing feedback right now. But that's what Alex is doing. Leaf, thank you so much for the 21 months. Uh, and I'm really glad that you liked antlers. Argent, Willie is great, and uh, he really enjoyed seeing you all. So I'm really happy about that. Hopefully, the stream will have a chance to see him again. And Leaf, thank you for the sub. I appreciate it. Thank you for continuing to make the stream a cool place, a destination. Kifu, great to see you. I hope you're having a good one. Happy New Year, everybody. We're playing a little Bloodborne today. Um, we're taking the first couple minutes of the stream while people fly all in to just grab some vials. We're getting on the gymnastics bar. All right, wow, you know, Lil Brina is pro possibly the world's biggest multitasker that, that exists. Uh, able to create comics, get on the gymnastics bar, and enjoy Bloodborne at the same time. And text on Twitch. So that is a uh, an absurd skill set that I want. I'm very jealous. Leaf, I didn't say that you said it was the best thing ever. I said I was glad that you liked it. I like it when people like things. You want a Guinness World Record? I think somebody probably has you beat by, like, probably one item in Guinness World Records. But if you keep trying, I bet you'll get there. I think you need to add one more item to your multitask list for it to, to be a record breaker. Yeah, we'll get some antlers. He must go and leave. It'll be great. Man, look at the weapons in this game. Look at the Whirly Gig Saw. Is this not one of the coolest weapons ever created? Uh, spoiler alert, it is. DJ, heck yeah, that's a good word record. Right, well, Leaf, I do, I do promise you that one day we'll play Hypnospace Outlaw. You probably won't be here when it happens, but we will one day. That's always how it goes. Whenever I get somebody that really wants to see me play a certain game, they're never here the day it happens. Leaf's going to a place called Antlerland. Yeah, this is the warm-up. This is the warm-up. We're killing some pigs. They drop lots of potions. And they actually drop a lot of souls, too. And they're actually really lethal. And now I gotta go back and get those. That's probably like a couple levels right there. Uh, but that's okay. It's the warm-up part of the stream. Croc, you die in these games. It happens. It's what these games are about. <clears throat> Piggy butts, yes. Very good, Croc. Thank you. Uh, and hello, Shaz. Welcome on in. Welcome on in, everybody. I hope you're ready for an evening of enchantment. That's what we serve up fresh and hot here every night on the reg. You hear four nights out of the week. Hey, that's cool. You don't usually interact in chat. That's true. And by the way, that's okay. I love lurkers. I really do. Please come and lurk, hang out, play games while I'm playing games. We all play games together. Works for me. Have I ever parried a pig? You mean visceral attack them? Yes, but you can't do it while you're two-handing. Uh, something like the chainsaw, like the... You need your character. Well, just make it based on me, and it'll be awesome. Alright, there you go. There's your character. Boom, got him. Bobby the Bloodborne Man. You know, that's got a ring to it. It's got a... It's got a certain panache to it. Bobby the Bloodborne Man. I don't know. I don't know that he'd be really hot on Tinder, but... It could work. I like it. 
Bobby could be a streamer. Streamers play Bloodborne? I've never heard of such a thing. Alright, we gotta get our souls back from this pig. I mean, we don't have to. But it wouldn't hurt. You know, I also thought it was a really nice touch of this game, how the... The creatures, like, steal your souls and they get, like, the, the glowing eyes. Like, what a... What a cute little thing, right? Like... They didn't have to add that. Okay, really? Come on now. This is some aggressive bacon. Good to go. All right. Wow. 106. Damn. I should come here and farm sometime, man. That's a lot of souls. And we got some blood vials too. Look at that. That was just a couple minutes. You know, that's a stream startup. Grabbing, grabbing uh, echoes. Some big echo energy to start the stream. We like that. Hey, pretentious one. How you doing? Welcome. Welcome in, everybody. It's great to have you here. As I was just talking about with Leaf, if you're just coming to lurk and play games, that's cool too. It's kind of like having your cake and eat it too, right? Ego, you know what? I used to eat Eggos every single day. How did you know that about me? I was big into Eggos a long time ago. Back when I worked the night shift at Walmart. Playing A-Rams. Well, that only takes like, you know, half, half your mental attention, so. By the way, I like A-Rams a lot too. Time to think. I hesitated. Oh, that's a lot of echoes. K-Dubs, thank you so much for the sub. Thanks for being here. Let's go to Castle Kanehurst and get into some trouble. Anyway, yeah, I used to eat echoes a ton, and then I switched to those, uh... those Pillsbury strudels for a while, too. Like the, the toasty sausage flaky things that you stick in the toaster. K Dubs! Thanks for the sub, you're almost at a year. At a year we do with it. Yeah, toaster strudel, that's right, Argent. I used to eat those for a while. The, uh, the breakfast ones. I used to love them. No name brand Pop Tarts? I mean, I ate Pop Tarts during one era of my life, but it was earlier. It was before the Eggos, before the Strudel. Probably in the 80s. You know, like everything else good in life, it was in the 80s. Third shift grocery store work is rough. I know. I did it for years. Uh, it was a wall. It was a 24-hour Walmart, so it was open when we were restocking the store. You can imagine the kind of guests that we had at those hours, dear lord. Um, Savoy, hey, what's up? Yeah, welcome. We're doing. Uh, we're in Forsaken Castle, Kanehurst. It's a vampire castle. Ooh, you miss working at You know Vorpal? You know? I mean, it's a good time to go shopping, sure, but I'm just saying some more interesting clientele also showed up during those hours. The best kind of castle? Yeah, for sure. Dangerous to explore, though, yes? This area, by the way, is completely missable and completely skippable. Uh, like, actually, some other huge areas in this game.
It is completely possible that in a run you wouldn't find this area at all. And it's rather large. Uh, with the big optional boss, quest line, and everything. And it also does unlock the Logarius wheel, which we talked about earlier, which we don't really have the mats to upgrade since we used them on the pizza cutter, but maybe we'll have extras, you never know. What kind of items do you generally ignore in my playthrough of this game? Interesting question, I don't know what that means, Croc. Can you amplify that inquiry? Shields don't exist in this game. They, they're not a thing. Your shield is hyper-aggressivity uh, in the face of certain death. I mean, again, the shields are, are a joke item in this game, Argent. I mean, they added a real one in the DLC, I think, but... I can pick up bolts of vital. Of course you do! No, 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 no. There's nothing useless. You can sell all the stuff you don't use in this game. There's a vendor. There, There is a shield. It is... The, the, the shield is a joke weapon. Um, it was added as a joke. But the DLC has a, has a more defensive option that's available. But yeah, I pick up everything. Why wouldn't you? Uh, what makes this game different in that way from Souls, though, is that... Armor is 90% cosmetic, and you don't need to worry about finding an armor set that works for you. It's not really going to impact your gameplay at all, so really what you want to find is your weapon. And there is a shield, Bebop Cowboy, but it is, it's a joke. From Software's always had a very funny sense of humor, which is why the shield is like a joke item. In this game, this game favors... I mean, your shield in this game is dodging. But also parrying, and, uh... And of course, the, the whole rally mechanic, which is when you gain your health back, from attacking, like, it wants you to be in a situation where you're constantly have the tension where you need to get hits in to get your health back. That is one of the fundamental differences between souls, right? You cannot sit back and play passively in this game. Or you'll find yourself whittled down and annihilated. Especially on the harder encounters. You gotta be in there. Uh, dancing around and swinging hard. Regardless of what you're using, all the weapons are viable. The trick weapons are really fun. You don't have to use it. In fact, I, like I said, I don't think the big weapons are actually that good in this game. I think the uh, smaller and faster, I think you get more value out of for your endurance bar. And it gives you more opportunities to dodge very lethal attacks. You get really heavily committed with this thing and the Kirk Hammer and other large weapons. Yes, Zelastar. This zone, again, is a uh, an optional zone. A lot of players probably missed it on their first playthrough. We contain some, like, hidden items and a secret boss, but there's nothing you have to do here, you know, to beat the game canonically. But yes, From Software does like their book-filled uh, places with ladders and staircases. Rich, hello, welcome on in. I'm a From Software. I'm not a From Software, but I do like From Software. Uh, Zen, you know, I'm feeling alright. I'm feeling alright. Thanks for asking. Yes, Argent, it does. As is the standard. Is this the PS Now version? Uh, Dr. Cheesesteak, I am actually playing this from disc, believe it or not. Uh, so no. It is being played on a PlayStation 5. The game is not enhanced for PlayStation 5. Good question. <laughs> yeah.
Yes, thank you, Zen. Well, we'll see how the rest of the week develops, but right now I feel, I feel okay. Some very mild congestion, which is, you know, typical of the winter months here in Minnesota. You know, K-Dubs, I've heard that. Uh, I believe it is true. Well done. You got bored by Dragon Age? Wow, who could have predicted that? Oh, wait, I did. Rich, we're doing a Bloodborne playthrough, in case you missed it. This started on New Year's. And I actually didn't want to go big weapon this time, but chat made me, so here we are. No, that's not Zen. I just haven't had time. I'm I'm very bit. You know, I wish there was more time in a day. I want to do that project, Zen. You can actually see my thoughts. If you missed the final episode of the Final Fantasy VII Remake playthrough, there are a lot of thoughts in there. I haven't created a specific video regarding that, though. Those are all on YouTube, Zen. So you can go do that. The finale is on YouTube of Final Fantasy VII Remaster. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Remake. Uh, I know, Rich, but I actually don't think they're the best in this game. Being overcommitted in this game is really rough. Uh, you miss some really important dodge windows. I mean, anything is viable, but I'm saying it's not my preferred in this particular title. Uh, he's not. The, the, uh, Pretendus One is not talking about Dragon Age Origins. Pretendus One is talking about Inquisition. I actually like Origins quite a bit. That finale is on YouTube. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to YouTube. Do not forget that. Where can you find me on YouTube? Listen, there, I have a freaking command on Twitch now to get to the YouTube. Exclamation point YouTube. Boom. Go. Pretend is when I warned you about that game and you said you liked it. So, you know what? You're gonna have to live with it. Do we keep our souls and bail? Or do we go for it? I think we all know the answer to that. Never try to like a game, Pretentious One. You either like it or you don't. If you find yourself forcing yourself to try to like a game, I'll give you a hint. You should be doing something else with your time. And that's no matter what anybody says about it, you know? I find myself I find myself constantly like dealing with people who are like saying stuff like that, like well, I really want to like this game because everybody said it was good. Well, who cares? It doesn't matter if they think it's good. It matters if you think it's good. If you're not having a good time, then go. Go forth and do something else that you have a good time with. Rich, we definitely keep this chat spoiler free. Absolutely do not ask that in chat. You can DM me. This guy DM me all the time. Is 
this guy's up in my Twitter mentions. It is. Zen, absolutely no Final Fantasy VII Remake spoilers in chat. We have very strict spoiler rules here. Shaz, you are not the first to have asked that. Uh, I feel okay. We, we try to keep this community completely spoiler-free when possible, Zen. Even... I understand that Final Fantasy VII Remake was finished on stream. Hey, Oath, what's up? Argent, yes, Marta Logarius does hit me up on Twitter. He is all up in my DMs. Good timing. Basically, the logic behind it, Zen, is we don't want to ruin that experience for somebody else. Uh, if it was the stream itself that we were actually completing the game on, then that would be a different story. But not everybody is here for that, you know what I mean? People are here for Bloodborne tonight, and they don't may, may not even know that we completed that game. So we have an absolute, like, you know, moratorium on spoiler materials. I claim no subject, but here lieth our throne. Thanks for dropping units and stream raiders, folks. Here's another battle for you coming in hot. Yeah, there is Pretendous One, but it's one of those things where you just know it. Like, something 25 years old is okay. Um, I did get another batch of grocery shells, yeah. See, I, of course, and you will not be in this chat because, uh, yeah, we don't do spoilers in chat here. Get thee gone. If you do want my thoughts on a lot of Final Fantasy VII Remake stuff, it's all in that video. 
I haven't made a, a, a dedicated video about it, but the final episode has a lot of me chatting during the um, during the credits and such. So feel free to check that out. It's on the YouTube. No, I I have decided to. I'm only going to be in this place for less than a month now, so I'm just simply going to let it let it go. I will certainly not share the name of the dog because I am afraid that someone might do something silly because this is the internet. No, have not, Zen. We started it very briefly. Are you talking about the Final Fantasy DLC or the DLC for this game? No, Croc, I cannot. Yeah, Shaz, I mean, you shouldn't have to think about stuff like that, but I do. Because reality can be a strange place sometimes, and yeah, we just try to keep everything, you know. Integrate. Yeah, we started Integrate on stream. Uh, in the same episode with the finale. You're currently seasoning your new carbon steel wok. How exciting is this? Very. I would classify that as very exciting. Girders are exciting. This is very true. Uh, I'm super excited for you to get that as well, uh, Zen. Also, I want plastic girders. Yes, Tetsudo, I know you're nice people, but the video goes up for everybody. You understand, not everybody. It, it is best in these situations to... I have found, over the course of my long life, that it is best to not... not ask for trouble. Okay. Uh, in that regard, it would it would serve no purpose to tell to identify the dog. I'm just a baby in elf years. Yeah, well. Too bad we're not measuring anything in elf years. <laughs> that they can, Shaz. That they can. Nobody here, of course. But... Of course it wasn't Willy. Why would it... Yes, it was not Willy. Camu, how you doing? Welcome to this amazing stream. It's Bloodborne tonight, yo. And we just killed Martyr Logarius. So that means right now we either kill Ibritas or Ludwig. Both fights are very fantastic. Uh, I think y'all are going to like Ludwig more. Ludwig is a spectacular battle. Everything in the DLC is pretty spectacular. Um, and Ludwig has, you know, From Software's famous, famous item. Does anybody in chat know where the Moonlight Greatsword came from? Let's think up something to discuss. Just you get one bonus point. Your interest. You get a Dan point. Uh -huh. Is that the sigil of Kanehurst? I've heard tell of Kanehurst nobles and their amusingly pompous invitations. Wonderful. I thank you profusely. I will depart in pretend as one. But first, I like that you're thinking. Of my gratitude. But the stingray from Demon Souls is the Storm Ruler, uh, which is a different I sword. We're talking about the Moonlight Great Sword. Praise the good blood. And, and let us several people in chat got that correct. That is streets. Kingsfield. It came from the creators. You know, we got a lot of great answers here in chat. On. Let us and may the.
That's right. Lil Brina with the big, the big hits there. Well, instead of cutting you a pizza, how about a giant... I'll tell you what, nobody does bosses better than From Software. Nobody. The one you're about to see is a pretty epic boss with a ton of fan service uh, attached. So, let's go say hello to Ludwig. It can be a very challenging fight, or I might one-shot it. I actually don't know what it's going to be, but... You know, with me, it can go either way. I will tell you this. None of the stuff in the DLC is easy. It's it's too very difficult. Much harder than the stuff in the base game. The same holds true for most of From's products. All of the hardest bosses in the, in the games are in DLC. Big brain. Yes. Big brain. Your brain is well appreciated here. Hello, Brina. As your as is your gymnastic ability. Do you have to beat base game to play DLC? No. You do not. But we have not beat the base game yet. In fact, one of the tragedies of Bloodborne is that you cannot beat the base game and then deal DLC, so we have to come back and beat the base game after we finish the DLC. Because if you beat the base game, you go right into New Game Plus, sadly. However, the best time to do the DLC for Tempest 1 is right before you do the boss of the game, and the boss of the game becomes available when you see the Hunter's Dream, which we are currently in burning. He's right over there in a the garden. He's, he's cool. We can go fight him right now, but if we did, we wouldn't be able to do any of the DLC. Best bosses ever is Punch-Out. That is not correct. That's right. See, it's very deep for Tennis 1. The dream is on... The dream is decaying. Alright, this is Ludwig. God, I'm not ready for this, chat. I really am not. I just have to hope that Instinct takes over. Eventually, if you play these games, Instinct will take over. Shadow of the Colossus is a good choice. Not quite as epic, though. So, dude, From has a has a has a talent for making epic boss encounters. The best of the best, in my opinion. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Hydrate! Hydrate! Yeah, Vorp will go ahead and request. Oh my god! Really? Yeah, you might not get that request. Yes, Danny Phantom, I did. I liked that game a lot. An unsightly beast. A great terror loops. I did, Danny. I think getting the Elder Dragons is really satisfying, and you should try it. Co-op is a lot of fun. <laughs> Big Boss, Phase 1 we should be able to handle. Phase 2, there's a cutscene, and you'll see more. Alright, this is it. This is where it gets really cool. 
Hi, Bacon. <laughs> you were at my side all along. My true mentor. My guiding moonlight. If you're like, that looks like a badass weapon, it's because it is. It's the official Easter egg of From Software. And now the fight is much more deadly, much more dangerous. Incredibly so. Is that a horse monster with a sword? Yes. Do you get the weapon after you beat him? Yes. Tell me, good hunter of the church, have you seen the light? Are my church hunters the honorable... It's a sweet weapon. Very powerful. I hoped they would be. Ah, good. That is a relief. To know I did not suffer such denigration for nothing. Thank you kindly. Now I may sleep in peace. Even in this darkest of nights, I see the moonlight. Now, you gotta understand, this fight is so much more than just how cool it is in the base level. Um, because it is, it does have that... Listen, From Software puts the Moonlight Greatsword in all of their, uh, in almost all their stuff. It was notably absent from Sekiro. And yes, thank you everybody in chat, uh, for your support. Vorpal called that I had to win that one, so I did. Okay, that's how it happened. I mean, the, the Pizza Cutter is an all-in weapon, Leaf. You are either gonna die, or you're gonna kill them. It does, Ravenna. It's a sweet weapon, though. It's very powerful. Very, very powerful. Like, you can definitely do a run with that weapon. It is very, very good. Well, the thing is, the thing about Guardian Apes, then, is that you can only do that trick once. It'll never be as impactful ever again in any of their other games. I know they're gonna do it. They love doing that crap, but... The dragon is... Okay, Cherry, it was kind of the Moonlight Sword. Okay, let me put it this way. The player couldn't get the Moonlight Sword. You gotta be... The... Okay, okay. I'll give you that, Cherry. I'll give you that. Big Boss, yeah, totally. It was a lot more stressful than it looked, I assure you. Can you get it early? Yeah, you can. M321, I mean, generally you're going to use it in like a New Game Plus run. Uh, you do have to come here and beat Ludwig to get it, so... Um, you can't really start with it on a run. Unless you were doing a New Game Plus run. It is still very powerful this time in the game if we wanted to use it. Um, however, we're, you know, we're fully spec for this thing. Which is a result of being spec for the Kirk Hammer. Have I played Ninja Blade? Wait, have I played Ninja Blade? Have 
Hey! Henny Lean, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Feels good, man. Thanks for streaming, streamer. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, as far as From Software's older games go, I've played Shadow Tower, Lost Kingdoms. Ninja Blade does not ring a bell. And thank you, Henny and Lean. I hope you have a good time while you're here on the stream. I appreciate the bits. Ludwig is no no easy opponent, even though I, I, I got kind of... Uh, with Ludwig, honestly, it's about finding the right time frames to get in there. He does have, unlike a lot of the other hard bosses in this game, like Orphan, uh, Ludwig has significant windows of opportunity. Even, But his attacks are all, like, severely lethal. So that's the real challenge with him. You're going to get time to hit him, but you can just basically never get hit by him. His phase two is like, that sword does can just rip you apart in moments. Like a lot of things in this game. Oh, I forgot about the rats. That's gonna kill me. <laughs> oh, that's okay, that's okay. Believe me, on this content, we're gonna die. The, the, the DLC for all the games, uh, Dark Souls 3, Bloodborne, Dark Souls 2, the, the DLC is always, it's it's designed for challenge mode. Which is why I kind of hope we get a, a, a DLC for Elden Ring. But I don't know if we will, because, considering how much, like, you know, the scope and scale of that game are in general. At one point, does Insight stop revealing things? I mean, Insight reveals things through and through. It has different tiers. Ravana, I don't know them all offhand. You can look them up. <clears throat> Insight was like the most fascinating. Probably when I, when I was reviewing this game, Insight was super fascinating, right? Just going through each area, um, seeing what had changed based on my Insight. Kind of like how they're doing, like you know, night and day in Elden Ring. That's gonna be freaking sweet. It is. I think. I think it's around forty or so. Offhand, I just don't want to go on record, bestie, in case it's something else. But yes, I think it's forty. Isn't there giant rats, Sekiro? Sekiro has. I don't know. I don't think Sekiro has giant rats. From is definitely a fan of giant everything, right? Just giant rats, spiders. Whatever. Giant sized. And, and typically horrifically mangled too, right? That's the other from thing. Take something ordinary and and make it a twisted, grotesque, malcontented version of itself. Nine times out of ten, if you just go toe to toe with a caster, you'll win. So take that risk. You don't want to give him the chance to like catch a breather and start shooting crap at you again. Roosters, yes, yeah, Sekiro does have giant roosters. One of the first things I ever saw in that game when I visited from software to do the cover story in Sekiro. Yes, that's the thing that happened. Man, this game. This game is just freaking brilliant through and through. This game is like, just... Oh. I don't think a game has ever conjured up such perfect atmosphere to go with the gameplay as this game did. Ever. Until maybe Elden Ring.
I know what you're saying to yourself. Why are you going back down, Dan? I'll show you. To fight the other super secret ultra hard boss, you gotta do this. I told you, Miyazaki loves elevator puzzles. If there's an elevator, always do every kind of interaction you can do with the elevator. Colonel, what up? Always check above the elevator, underneath the elevator, and if there's any jumps that you can make from the elevator on the way up or down. This is my least favorite level of the entire game. Hopefully it doesn't take us too long to get through. Metal Gear Solid is a great game. I I'm not a huge Metal Gear fan, but Metal Gear Solid I think was... Uh quite the trendsetter back when it was like the game du jour for the PlayStation. I know me and all my friends played it. It was great fun figuring out the Psycho Mantis, uh, you know, surprise. So many guys in this room. Yeah, like I said, I'm not a, I'm not a, a huge fan of the series or anything, but big fan of Solid. I think most people are, especially from like a, a moment in time perspective. That big PS1 era energy. Did I ever get to Phantom Pain? No. No, I did not. Yeah, but pretend it's when look at like Dragon Age Inquisition though, you know? I think you should thank your friend for getting that for you, even though you didn't like it. They thought it was going to be special for you. This email is turning out to be really long. What email? Oh god, the old dark room trick. I don't remember this. Well, that room is definitely just instantaneous death. We're not going down there. <laughs> Anytime you see like a, hey, there's a glowing object, you need to come get it. Uh, that is a surefire way to get killed. I could. I do have the lantern, bestie. Friends don't let friends play mediocre games. Sure, th listen, mediocre games can be appreciated, pretendous one. You don't always have to be playing the best games in the world. I agree that it is smart to prioritize in this land where we have so many different game choices. There's a time and place for games that aren't amazing. Um, but yes, generally I would say... 
if you have a choice to play an amazing game or a not amazing game, then yeah, you play the amazing game, but... I don't think that's like a revolutionary take or anything. Okay, in this level I always forget how to get the shortcut. Hopefully we just organically find it and don't get knocked out. I'm hugging the stair rail. There's a reason why I'm taking this damage. I'm just choosing to get beat on because God knows we're not going to the other side of that stairs. I do remember that we're not doing the brain fluid quest, Bestie, but yeah, there's somebody downstairs who wants the brain fluid in a chair. What is this, the Duke's Archives? Yes, Colonel. Uh, the Duke's Archives and Duke Archives likes have been replicated across the Souls games and in Bloodborne. You'll love, you know, these are in every Souls game right here. These, uh, these look up and be careful because there's stuff on the ramparts, you know, that's going to come down and get you. This is just like, again, once you've played all these games extensively, you really get to see, you know, Miyazaki's game design. And, uh... You can kind of know how things are going to work before they even happen. Like, you know when you get a situation like this that there's going to be areas where something's going to fall down on you and try to knock you off. Where the challenge isn't the rat, right? It's the challenge is keeping your balance on the platform. And it's really great. Honestly, over the last decade, it has been fascinating to watch um, Miyazaki's game design get more and more capabilities um, as From Software grows as a studio. Like, sure, it's the same old trick, right? But uh, these things get better and better with uh, their new capabilities over there. So I think that by raising this platform up, we actually got the shortcut. There is a brain fluid quest, as was mentioned by someone in chat. I just don't care. This is, what, like I said, I hate the zone. And I'd like to get through it as quickly as possible, because there's some really good stuff after it. Pratable, thank you so much for the sub. I really appreciate that. Really suck to be one of these guys. Listen close. The big hand when I jumped into the painting. You didn't jump into a painting in this game. That's a Dark Souls thing. <clears throat> the painted worlds are in Dark Souls. Okay, let's do the stream real quick. I want to thank you again, Pratable, for the sub. Appreciate it immensely. Thanks for being here. I hope you have a great time. Watching me get my butt kicked by bosses this evening, most likely. The fat crows. Yeah, so they do fun stuff with the crows, right? Oh no, hey, knock it if you want. I mean, it, it for, it's at this point, I think you know if you, I, I think at this point, players know if they like From Software games or not. Now, Sekiro was kind of like divided for me personally even. Like, I think Sekiro's a great game, but I prefer their standard Dark Fantasy stuff. But there's, there's plenty of room across the board. They, they make great stuff. They make great stuff. This is a good chance for me to hydrate. I think enemy design and boss design have always been one of their extremely strong points. Which is hilarious um, when you look back and look at how, like, Seath the Scaleless looked in Kingsfield. Like an absolute joke of a, of a, of a thing. Incredible! This is Stream Raiders. This is a, um, kind of an MMORPG that the streamer plays with chat. Uh, so basically, I got my character down. And then chat places their characters down. 
like healers, tanks, musketeers, bombs, archers, barbarians, monks, you know, the whole deal. You fight it out, you get treasure after every round. It kind of gives me a, a break every 30 minutes or so that I can remind me to, like, take a drink of water, get up if I need to. But also, everybody in chat is continuing. Who's playing? Continues to, like, get items and, uh, and new characters. And level up, all that fun stuff. It's basically like an MMRPG Drop raid. some freaking units, gang! Yeah. It's like a MMRPG that you play with the streamer. Um, more or less. That's the short pitch. I d uh, yes, I have talked about it before, Pratable. We've been running it forever here. So with it being a Souls game... Is it still running so you can't pause it? Yeah, you can't pause any of them except Sekiro. We're online right now. And since Sekiro's not online, you can pause it. I don't think the lack of a pause button was ever, like, trying to hurt people. It's because it is online. Imagine being invaded here. Why well, imagine? I'm sure it'll... <laughs> I, uh, I think that's a very, uh, reasonable reality. We got stream sniped a couple times yesterday, if you recall. It's just that I don't care. Like, at this point, like, I've been invaded so many times. I've killed so many invaders. It doesn't bother me. It's part of the game, right? Whatever. It's just one more death. Who cares? Like I said, eventually, one of the best skills to have to play a Souls game is patience and tenacity. And the willingness to approach adversity head on. It's going to happen. And if you can be ready for it, you will have a much better experience. And honestly, some of that just comes with time. Like, when I started playing Souls games, I would always be like, Oh my god, my souls! I lost my souls! Or I fell off a ledge! And I would freak out, right? But, nah. Nah. You get used to it. It's part of the game experience. Should you buy Dark Souls 2 Scholar and try it again? Dark Souls 2 Scholar is an incredible game. Um, I feel like Dark Souls 2 has been quite unfairly maligned by the haters. Dark Souls 2 is an extremely high quality game. There are some things that I... Uh, there are some things about Dark Souls 2 that I have... Exp that I've gone over it at length. Um... That you need to be on the lookout for and be aware of. But other than that, Dark Souls 2 is an incredible game. And I highly recommend it. I think it's the best Souls game with DLC. I think it has a lot of really awesome options for the super fans. We got some cool new gems, please. No. Attack versus beasts down. Is there anything that we have to find? Uh, yeah, just nine point one percent. Man, that's tasty. Now, with Dark Souls 2, you just have to put your points in adaptability and suck it up for like, you know, for 20, I don't know how many levels it is, but you gotta get that taken care of so that you can have your traditional role. And the DLC has some incredible bosses, but it's a little bit overbearing with some of the, the, the corpse runs. There's some really awful runbacks in the DLC, specifically to like Sir Owan and such. But... You gotta have some pretty serious retro goggles on Zelly Star. And I did not get the shortcut.
go me. That's where you bring the brain, the, the brain fluid, by the way, right there. Which boss are we going to fight next? The next boss, pretendous one, is called Living Rejects. No. Living Failures. Uh, and then right after that we fight Maria, which is an awesome fight. Lady Maria is a very good fight. In the, it, definitely in the top ten, like, Souls fights, I think. It's tough these days, because there's so many good ones. But we are right on the cusp of fighting the living failures right now. We just to get to that area there. We can run down there. There is a hunter here. We, I think we should clear out, because we have to run back. Yeah, Dark Souls 2 is fantastic. I think if you like the other Souls games, and you've been holding off on Dark Souls 2 because of some, like, perceived lack of quality compared to the other games, I think that is exactly that. It's perception only. And, and Scholar is the, is, the, is the best version, I believe. Did I luck out Bestie Hammer or did I pro style it? That's the question. That's how you get the brain fluid. That's not how you give the brain fluid to, Bestie. Lady Maria? I'm sure they do, Zelestar. I'm sure they do. Okay, I should have hydrated. We're going too fast. This fight can be deceptively difficult. You'll notice we're going to use the sunflower, uh... We'll use the sunflower when the time comes. You'll see why. These aliens can do some pretty sick stuff. Oh, they're doing it. What? Come on, that's never killed me. Oh, whatever. We gotta have a good show, right? Now it's riding time. Hey, Dirty Drew, what's up? The scenery reminds me of ending. 
Yeah, kind of like they always, you know, you got to have that kind of like epic, you know, samurai battle in the in the field of flowers. They do have an ultimate meteor move, pretend one, yeah. They're actually a lot more dangerous than I made it look in the regular phases, too. They pack a punch, and the thing is, you get attacked by them like five at the same time. Like, if they're up. If you've got two casting magic on you while one hits you, you're just down for the count. So you gotta keep on the move and try to take them out one at a time. I did not expect to get killed by that ability. But it does happen. Dirty Drew, you can be a cooler boss than that, okay? Uh, I see from chat people say, you know, I remember dying a bunch here. I mean... This DLC is challenging. And again, we've talked about this very briefly already. From Software's DLC content is generally designed for the, you know, the user who has completed the game and is looking for the, the, uh, the ultimate challenge, so to speak. So they don't really hold anything back in the DLC, as, as, whereas I think the, the standard games are, are fairly approachable in comparison with the difficulty. You're very welcome, Dirty Drew. Alright, round two. by the meteors, so we should be okay if we can gain control of the fight. Again, using this big thing in the middle to kind of uh, guide their movements and actions is really handy. Again, I've said this before, if there's a pillar in a Miyazaki fight, it's not there for, uh, it's not there to look good. It's there for a reason. Got him, so we're gonna be we're gonna be careful here. You don't want two of them swinging at you at once. Even though it might be tempting to hit two of them at the same time, you really don't want to take that chance.
It really is jealous. I mean, hey, that's always been true, right? Ooh. All right. We got Lady Maria next. That's a good one. That's a really good one. I think we'll go pop over to kill Abritas first. This boss is easy to miss. You have to break that window. And we're already in the secret area. As always, I really do love that From Software puts some incredible challenges and secrets. In places where people would just never look without talking to each other, you know what I mean? Hey, bestie, we do it all here, okay? Remember strategy guides? Sure. Why would I? What do you mean? They still exist. Alright. This fight, calm nerves are essential. I don't know if you've seen this one before, but it's a doozy. for that. I thought I could get away with it. I thought I could get away with it. Uh, Ravenna, we, we never committed to that, no. That's just gonna, that's gonna take so long. And it's not that interesting. Ah, uh, that's true, Bestie, that's true. We, uh, we picked a fight with the alien queen and we lost. I got no problem with Chalice Dungeons except they take forever. You know what? Damn it, I thought that was gonna go. There's even a summon here we can use. We should use it, right? Alright. You got lucky first time. I had her so down, too. I was just hugging her so, like, perfectly.
threw up the warning. And I was like, maybe if I'm this maybe if I'm so greedy I can just stagger her out of it. Yeah, spoiler alert, that didn't work. I know, Ravana, but I told you the secret to big bosses yesterday, right? And that is, of course, to stay inside of them. <laughs> Who really won? I don't know. Me. Uh, bestie, yeah, that's why you, there there are all kinds of fun alien weapons, including tentacles and laser beams and all kinds of stuff. Uh, in fact, I think we picked up Call Beyond before we even fought her. But yes, Ty goes to the alien. I don't think so because guess what, Pretendus one, the alien is not going to respawn. So before the DLC, Abritas was the biggest and baddest boss in the game. Before the DLC, of course. What would you do if she was there again? I'd kill her again, Zolster. What the hell do you think we'd do? Arcane and Blood Tinge. Yeah, those, that's a sweet run. Uh, obviously, there's some really fun tools that you can do stuff with in that regard. I mean, actually, no, I think it would be sweet if she respawned. We'd kill her again. Duh. All right, we gotta hydrate. We got Maria next. And after that slop, uh, I don't know. I don't know if we're ready for Maria. What do you think, chat? Submit a bug report? No, that's not gonna happen. Let's go. Yeah, DJ, I like it. I like it. I like the energy here tonight. I remember when German was an epic, epic battle. Yeah, as All-Star does, doesn't it? I'm using all three moon runes, so we've been getting tons and tons of souls from bosses. They do stack. Dan, that would make me break the disc. No, come on, it wouldn't pretend just one. Come on now.
Okay. Folks, you're in for a big one. Marta Logarius? Very... Yeah, I mean... Again. See, I like the, the approach that From has used in the last... Five years... Six years, Bestie. Which is... They still have super hardcore encounters for the for the diehard Souls fans, but they're optional, right? Martyr's optional, Abridus is optional, the DLC is all optional. I'm certain Elden Ring's gonna be the same way. I mean, there's still gonna be hardcore canonical main fights too. There always is, but I'm saying the really, the real ball busters are optional. I don't, I don't honestly think I'm ready to fight Maria right now. I'm just not feeling it right now. She's a whole fight. You know what they say, you should leave the dead well enough alone. Oh, I'll just go on then. Thanks. Thanks, Maria. Bye. Oh... <laughs> like, what else do you even... I mean... Alright. Let's do it. A corpse should be left well alone. I mean, what I think is funny about this fight is it's just like basically German 2.0. So sweetly. Only an honest death will kill you now. You know you're in for a fight in a Souls game when you fight something that's your size. And not a giant monster. She's fast. That did not hit me. She wasn't even looking at me. Leapot, what's up? You're allowed to doubt me. I doubted myself for a second when I got hit with that stray grab. How you doing? Welcome. 
Oh, that's a good time. This is a good time for a stream raid. Man, we better not beat Orphan tonight. I was expecting to go through the DLC in a couple nights. We're not gonna. We're gonna get. We got like what half an hour plus left. We got maybe uh, an hour and a half. Maybe maybe we got maybe thirty minutes. You know, thirty minutes to forty-five minutes left. So. Orphan or bust? I don't know about that. We'll maybe get. We'll get to get to Orphan. We gotta get through the Hamlet. It's time for stream raiders, folks. If you dropped a unit, enjoy uh, a battle. Oof. That was a, that was a pretty exciting round, Maria, wasn't it? When you're using a really heavy weapon against her like that, you really, really, really have to take advantage of the fact that she gets staggered. Um. Otherwise, you'll never you'll never be able to get in on her. So you got to go. All, you're either. I mean, like so many other things in Bloodborne. You're either all in or you're not in, right? Thanks for coming this one. I mean, that fight gets the blood flowing, right? So we only have two fights left, and they're both really, really hardcore. Orphan, which a lot of people think is the hardest boss in any From Software game. And Lawrence. Which people think is extremely difficult as well. Some people say that Lawrence is harder than um, Orphan. I'm not in that camp, but they are both difficult bosses. That's that's a certainty. Yeah, Bestie. They, they are both extremely challenging fights. There's no argument about that. And I guess after that we still have German too, so I forgot about that. Although German, German and Mood Presence will not really present too much of a challenge because of the fact that we'll have DLC done at that point and we'll be like much bigger than they are. Um, and that, From Software definitely should have had an option to go into New Game Plus so that we could have fought German at the right time. So later, what is my favorite from software boss? I have I have said that many times, Colonel. I know chat knows, but I'll, I'll let people guess first. Uh, so you got you got a minute to guess my favorite from software boss. Uh, it's it's not close, and I will reveal it. I'll give you all about a minute to get guesses in. <sighs> okay, time to go to the Hamlet. Nobody's got it right so far. Yeah, Bestie, it's not... I want it to be the player's choice just so that we could have done him when you're supposed to do him. Nobody's gotten it right yet. Somebody got it right. Okay, so it is Sister Free Day. Um, it's Sister Free. That fight, I think, is amazing. Basically, to me, Sister Free is like... Uh, is like Lady Maria times three, right? You have to learn all three, you have to learn three different boss fights and then do them all. And one of them is a really hardcore boss fight and the other two are challenging in their own right. Bestie, maybe we'll do that. Pyramid Head is not a Souls boss. No, it's free day. It's definitely free day. Listen, I've had lots of time to think about this and play through the games and come to the determination that, that free day is, like, the best. I understand it's a ball buster of a fight, but it's the best. It is a completely elegant match uh, with basically increasing tempo and difficulty, and it is three different encounters in one. It's a real test of player endurance. Do I have a least favorite? I mean, pick any of the garbage bosses. There's plenty. Bed of Chaos, probably. The Minotaur you fight on the roof? The Taurus Demon, pretentious one? That one's always a really great moment for the first time you play through Dark Souls, right? Just jumps off. You're just like, well, here's a wide open stretch of land. 
I'm gonna say better chaos. Better chaos is a is bad. At that point in Souls, they had like you know, and and from software has has spoken to to people about it, including me, about like you know the. Uh, less than stellar quality of Lost Isoleth, Bed of Chaos, and that that fourth portion of the game essentially. Oh, the Mirror Knight is fantastic! Listen, bestie, ha bestie, I don't think you're gonna find a bigger Dark Souls two stand in the universe than me. I unironically think Dark Souls two is the best Dark Souls. That game has mad haters, I know. Whatever. Not everybody likes, you know, a fine lobster bisque either. Did they ever nail it with this game or what? Just like just like look at it for a second. Like damn. Leap out, I don't really care what you call me. No, don't go to, no, don't do that. No, no, no. Go down there. Yeah, but Colonel, every one of the entries has obnoxious bosses. Look at what else you know, we got, you know, Fume Knight, Sir Alon. Sir Alon is the gentleman's fight. Okay. Sir Alon is the battle for gentle gentlemen and scholars. Okay. Okay. We were almost there. We were almost there. You can call me that too. That's my name. That's my name, Gleepot, so you can definitely call me that. No, Bed of Chaos is is, is awful. And, and yeah, there are... Some, you know, when you make 100 boss fights, they're not all going to be amazing. But I will say that the boss fight quality has continued to increase and impress. And um, I, I think Elden Ring is going to blow people away in that regard as well. Or did that thing not even heal me? Touch the lantern! Yeah, you stay out there. Wait, did I kill s <laughs> I just got some items. What died? I don't know. I don't care. Artori, I mean, like I said, all the DLC bosses. And Artorias, you know, I think when they have a story character that's really important, like Artorias, uh, they get a little bit of an extra bump. I mean, all DLC bosses are designed to be hard. From the core. Basically, the thought process on that, again, I'm speculating here, is that if you're in the DLC, then you know it's time to roll, you know what I mean? 
you're not just, uh, you know, you're not there to kill Gwen. You've killed Gwen, and you're ready for something really, really nasty. You're there to party. Beep boop. Hi, Croc. What up? Wait. What I do is secure. I, I, I'm still not. You know, uh, that's that's a good question, Danny. On stream, uh, well, I've, I've thought about it. Maybe. I could have sworn we're in the right spot. Yes. Yeah, Zilla Star. I could have sworn the way for it was through here. Oh well. They often reuse asses. They do! And I've seen a lot of chatter on social about how, like, it's not okay that they use the same door opening animation or whatever. It's so ridiculous. Who cares? Whatever. Whatever. You know what? You want to get upset about that? Be like, I'm not buying Elden Ring because they reused assets. Then don't. I feel you. Go ahead. Make your statement. Leaf what? Tell us a story about the 80s. The 80s were awesome. I mean, you have a really good door opening animation when... You know what? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I... If your preference is to not play Elden Ring because there was, uh... Because they reuse animations, then I... Go ahead. I, I definitely don't judge you for it. I think you're going to miss out on an incredible game. But it's your choice. The way forward will be ahead. Isn't that amazing how I come up with these amazing puns? Leaf. Yes, it is. That's true, Zolstar. You're not wrong, Zolstar. You're not wrong. I know exactly where we're at, sadly. I didn't think I'd get through here that this quick. invade somebody else. Did you know that Zelda... You know... It's... I, I get it. I'm, I'm not discrediting. If they do not want to play the game on those merits, then I have no problem with them doing that. No, they're not. The, I, I, the floppy and the sewer men, I told you, I can take you to them. 
Those are different. Not only are they trying to kill us bestie in this area of the game, it is probably the most aggressive trying to kill you uh, area in the entirety of the game. I know. I know, I know what awaits us, and it's, it is, listen, if we don't beat Koss tonight, don't yell at me. It is literally like the hardest fight. A lot of people would say it's the hardest fight in any From Software game that currently exists. And I don't really have an argument to that, it is incredibly difficult. I did think Ishin was harder, but I think in its own way, that cost is harder. I think Ishin is difficult, but once you learn Ishin, you have Ishin, and cost is much harder to learn. He has way too many variables in his encounter. More than Ishin, I think. He, he can do so many change-ups and mix-ups and, and combo strings and, and everything, just like he is an unpredictable weapon of mass destruction. Why are my gems bad? <sighs> wow. We need to get some gems. Right, we're gonna take our moon runes off. We're gonna need actual runes to fight the big guy. This is an amazing fight. Do I have a favorite from software level or area? Yeah. Um. several, which makes it tough. I think... I think... I mean, the fishing hamlet's pretty damn close. But I think, um... No, that, that's not gonna help. I wanna, I wanna come up with a... I, th I think it's gonna be... I think it'll be Irithyll, or the Boreal Valley. Whatever you wanna call it. Alright, fam. <laughs> well, 
let's do this thing. Sens. Yeah, Sens Fortress. I would never show that to a new player to try to get them into the series, but I get it. Yes, Bestie Hammer. I think they excel at snow areas over there from. I think they're magic. That they make magical snow areas. But that's also a question I need to give more thought than I did to um, the, my favorite boss because I had that one ready to go. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh my god, oh my god. You know what? Last time I did one- I want to say before I die here, I think the last time I fought him I did one shot him, but it's not gonna happen this time. I got lucky. Majula is a very good pick, Dr. Mon. It will not happen, Gleepot. It will not happen. I can tell already that my nerves are way too tense to do it. Th I mean, this boss can take people hours. That is not an exaggeration, and that is how he is. He is a merciless and cruel opponent. I, Gleepot, I know who I am. I got nothing to prove. I've killed this guy a billion times, but it doesn't always go easy, and that's the reality of it. Uh, that placenta makes a wonderful instrument. Dude, pretend this one. I don't know if you haven't seen the second. I mean, his first phase is nothing, by the way. <sighs> Actually, DJ, he has a few in stage one. However, it do it is more difficult with like the Kirk hammer or the saw blade. Because even your hit windows are still going to get you hit if you don't do it perfectly. Um, his hit windows vanish rather quickly later in the fight. I did, Snack, and I'm very proud of that. That's that's not going to happen here tonight, and I'm okay with that, too.
Really? backswing on it. Come on. This guy is such horseshit sometimes. It's a tough one, gang. Man. Ah, uh, yeah, it was a... That's the thing, you know? That's that's why it's a tough fight. It's not supposed to be easy. Uh, first attempt, Pratable. I don't think it's possible. I mean, it's probably possible to one-shot him with, like, a bunch of weird mods, maybe. Damn it. That might be the best... End up being the best attempt of the night. Oh. Hi, Prime. Thank you. Enjoy these howling noises. I made them just for you. Doctor underscore mono cheered. X two hundred. 
God damn I was so frustrated with this boss fights but your five subs really just gave me the will to live. I really didn't deserve this you didn't have to omg. Thank you so much you keep this light of life alive you beautiful soul. Say hello to our newest VIP. Fresh butter. Upside down six upside down six. Random stream deck sound effects. I mean that's how it goes for tennis one. Thank you Dr. Monitor for the bits and the uh, the wonderful message. He can kill you incredibly fast if you miss a beat. That's what makes the fight so tough, actually, is he has a huge variety of attacks, and there is very little room for error at any time. And the fact is, the fight lasts a long time. So it's as much of an endurance fight as it is to just, like, you know, attempting to handle his enormous range of moves. No, we take the pickles, Prime. And now we're gonna like, you know, once you lose once, man, it's a, it can be a downward spiral. You can lose for hours after that until you mentally reset. It's uh, it's just kind of the way of souls. Again, I don't think there are any as fights as challenging as this throughout the series, so it's kind of an exception. Do not be intimidated by Souls games by this encounter. This is not average uh, in any way. And definitely don't let it turn you off to the Souls games or anything. Here we go. We got a nice stream right here. Uh, and just because everyone's been so cool tonight, we'll put another 30 on the clock. But after that, we're, whether we beat him or not, we're going to be done with the stream after 30. Oh, man, what a fight, yo. Like, seriously, it's a great fight. But I don't, it's like, like it's not one of the best boss fights or anything. It's just like, it's got so many freaking variables. <clears throat> we'll place one more 30 on the clock. Because y'all have been awesome tonight. I hope you've had a good time here. I hope you continue to have a good time here. Yes, we do. You know how many bosses we killed tonight? We started doing yoga. I I'm doing yoga right now. I'm doing hot yoga. You've never had yoga until you've had Orphan of Cost do yoga all over your body. Can you believe that I one-shot this guy last time we did him? Yes, bestie, and um, I don't want to talk too soon about anything, but I think in the future that I'm going to be doing my best to bring you content of that nature. Even better than that. At least we're not done yet. We're going to do a few more attempts on, on Big Boy. Leaf, we're not done yet. You say thanks for streaming, we're leaving. We're not leaving. Bestie, yeah, I mean, I, a lot of exciting things in, in the works for, for GI this year, I think, so. I just don't want to get ahead of myself and say anything out of turn. I don't know where you got that impression, Arjun. We are going to put 30, 30 minutes of attempts on, you know, cost, I don't, the first time I beat Koss, when I was reviewing the DLC, I don't know how long many attempts it took me. I will tell you this. It was a lot. <clears throat> Nobody starts off as a, you know, a, a, a finesse Souls player, okay? There, There's always, especially with bosses like that. That guy beat me a lot. <laughs> Yes, pretentious one. That's correct. You got it. I like the way you're thinking. How do you beat the Pontiff? Okay, so big boss. The trick to beating Pontiff is to do the Pontiff last. There are other places you can go. But 
you may not know is the Pontiff was originally the boss of that The Pontiff was originally the boss of that game. You're not stuck. You're not stuck. Um Go do um go into the Irithyll dungeon. Not not last, but you don't do him when he is first available. He's gonna be very challenging at that point unless you're very unless you know the game very well. So what you should do is consider going to some other areas. Uh, there are two other areas that you can go, two other directions you can go, and then they split into other directions. You do not need to go to Pontiff right now. I don't. Have you discovered the Irithyll Dungeon? Here's a couple other places you can go, Big Boss, before I get into this fight again. Irithyll Dungeon, which is located in the water. So don't go to Pontiff. Go down to the water. And you'll find a, a little mansion down there with a bonfire that leads to the dungeon. Go that way. If you don't want to go that way, don't forget you can go below the catacombs. There's a rickety bridge right near where you killed Wolnir. You can climb the bridge down like a ladder to a new zone. And in addition to that, there is also the Dancer of the Boreal Valley you can do now uh, by going to where you killed Vort, walking back to the lady who gave you the poster after you killed Vort, and attacking that lady. Go ahead. It's fine. Do it. It's totally fine. Those are all three directions you can go right now. The best choice would be the dungeon. Go to the dungeon. Do it. Guys, freaking yo yo. I'll give you some more tips on how to get to the dungeon after this battle. How did that hit me? How did that hit me?
Yeah. Mm. <sighs> yes, big boss, as I said, do not do him now. Yeah, go down to that lake, go into the cavern there, and um, you'll get your way to the next zone. Go that way. The dungeon will seem hard, but the boss is a joke. And there's lots of good items down there, including Estus shards and stuff like that. And then if you, that doesn't work, i got two other directions for you to go. Oh yeah, get hyped. What up? Screw you, Cos. Or some say Cosm. I mean, we're not done yet. Hey, we still got 23 in the clock, so we can go visit Lawrence. Ah. Sweet child of Kos. Returned to the ocean. A bottomless curse. A bottomless sea. Accepting of all that there is and can be. I thought that was pretty poggies. Oh yeah, Camu, that is... Again, most people would say that's the hardest boss. Insults. Period. I think Ishin gives him a pretty good run for the money. But he's more unpredictable than Ishin. He he is so unbelievably just He's complete garbo sometimes. Um Thanks, Levon. I got there thanks to viewers like you. But that's not all. I mean we still have German everything to do after that, but uh, we still have Lawrence on deck immediately, who is uh, no, he will not go quietly. Some people say Lawrence is harder than German, actually. Oh, no, it's not Dark Lurker. Definitely not Dark Lurker. Dark Lurker's not a problem. Not, I mean, not in comparison to these. Dark, Dark Lurker's probably not in the top 10 hardest bosses, period. It's Dark Lurker, Free... I mean, not Dark Lurker. Uh, it's Freed, Midir, Koss, uh, Ishin. Stray Demon. No. Uh, Demon of Hatred probably makes the top 10. Oh, ONS was definitely the hardest fight in original base Dark Souls, yes. But over time, they've, uh, they continue to one-up their, uh, their hardcore optional bosses kind of thing. I mean, uh, again, we talked about this a little bit earlier, Arjun. Everybody has their own unique challenge, right? You saw how I struggled with Shadows of Yarnum for whatever reason. Although we did beat him in, like, what? Two or three tries? They tend to get the best of me a few times. Other people struggle with other... Everybody's got their own... Their own quirky fights they hate. But I'm, I'm talking about, like, in general. Koss is just, like, an extreme ball buster. I think he actually probably is the hardest. It's just because at any time in that fight, no matter how ahead you are, you are you are 0.5 seconds away from death. Surlan, uh, that's making a different qualifier though. That that's making a different qualifier, Doctor Mano. Medir is definitely a candidate. I agree. He's in the top five. Medir, Freed, Koss, Ishin. Do we think I want this is a good fight? I think it's a, I think it is, yeah. I think it's a very unique fight. In Souls, that is the hardest game in the base Souls game. I think it's an interesting fight that they've tried, Argent, in a lot of better ways since then. But having, like, you know, big guy and fast guy in the same battle and you have to manage the two different units at once is an interesting boss concept.
I mean, they've, they've obviously developed... They've gone way into developing bosses since the original Souls, right? You gotta remember, with Demon Souls, boss fights were, like, not even a real thing. They were all puzzles. And then fights like ONS brought them into the more, like, the more... Figure it out, boss fight. That's much more of a a challenge than a than a than a, a puzzle to be discovered. I don't have a problem with puzzle bosses. They still are in the games, but they're no longer the focus, right? We don't talk about the puzzle bosses. We talk about Nameless King, Midir, Lawrence, Orphan. You know, the puzzle bosses are in all the games now still, right? Even Sekiro has one. Hey, Killzone, what's up? If there are Belfry Gargoyles in Elden Ring, how many will have to fight at once? 32? 16. What's my favorite puzzle boss in, From, in FromSoft? Good question. Uh, I think it's Storm King from Demon Souls. Uh, I mean, Argent, again, the stuff in, D in Dark Souls was rudimentary compared to what we have today. There was no freaking Orphan of Cost back then with, like, a variable moveset with, like, ten different mix-ups, change-ups, combos, and, and chains, and all kinds of weird stuff that he can do to, to screw up the player, like, no matter how well they know the fight, right? Um, obviously, I'm sure players know some of the stuff better than ever and can do some of that, but... Your average player is never going to know exactly what he's got coming out of his pocket next. Unlike a lot of bosses back in Demon Souls or Dark Souls where you will actually know exactly what they're going to do next. Well, we got 15 minutes left, folks, so uh, I guess we're going into this garden here. We did not get three umbilical cords. I don't care. Good hunter. You've done well. The night is near its end. Now, I will show you mercy. So, pretentious one. You will die. This is the original final battle in the game, and, and it's beautiful and amazing. 
I, um... You will be freed. You know, after I beat the game, actually, the first time when I was reviewing it, I... I, uh, I got back to it again on another playthrough and just... I, I enjoyed the music of this fight. So obviously, when you get to this, do not submit your life. If you submit your life, the game ends and you get the bad ending. There are three different endings to the core game. Um, I mean, I guess there's no real bad ending, right? But you know what I mean. You don't get to fight the boss, so... I guess this is kind of a creative way to make it so that you can beat the canonical game without fighting the hard boss. What are you talking about, Arjun? We're, this is, we just killed Koss! I do not care about Moon Presence, and I don't want to go get the stupid umbilical... We, we need one more umbilical cord. You want to go get the umbilical cord? I mean, actually, I'm kind of screwed now. I have to make an option. I don't think I can just back out of this. I could die to him. <laughs> That's right, Tetsuto, exactly. Dear, oh dear. What was it? It's got its own great track for this. Okay, fine. We'll go get the stupid the thing. Dream. DJ, all right. I'll give my life to German so we can go get the dumb thing. Oh, it doesn't matter. Pre-DLC, this was a legendary boss in the first game. And he's still a good boss. He's still a badass. He comes down to the hunter's helper to clean up. Oh, I, I think so, Shrouded, right? As long as it's before you kill him. Tonight, Gammon joins the hunt. Alright, we're not gonna fight him, because we're gonna go get the third cord. It's a great fight. Look at this. Look at this picturesque field against. He's not a samurai, but like, you know, he's kind of like a vampire samurai, right? This is like a mad anime. This is like Vampire Hunter D, the battle here, and I'm all about it. By the way, we are intentionally dying here, okay? You know, you know what? At From Software, they always do an incredible job with um, the scythe bosses in the From Software games, right? They never miss, except maybe Nishandra. But in general, the side bosses are, are god tier. You got, you know, you got Priscilla, you got German, you got Freed. If they have a scythe, you know business is about to be had. All right, we got to get the last. We got ten minutes left of the stream. I don't know if that's enough time to get the last cord. We'll see. What are the odds the final boss in Elden Ring takes place in a large field filled with flowers or swords strewn about? Low. <laughs> that's my uh, that's my guess. Nishandra was fine. I I don't think anyone's ready for Elden Ring. I really don't. I don't think I'm ready for Elden Ring. I don't think you're ready for Elden Ring. I think Elden Ring is going to be very, very special. Barry, you're here. You're here at the end of the stream. You missed a lot. But thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Because we're getting this final umbilical cord, it looks like we'll wrap up German tomorrow night and Moon Presence. We'll have a little From Software chat, and then we'll move on to a different game. If you think the final boss of Elden Ring is only going to have three phases, when we've established, when we've got a new meta where we have to have at least five phases, you know, I, th I think we got at least a five phase fight coming, Arjun. Three is so pedestrian. We gotta up those phases. Those are rookie numbers. We gotta bump those up. There's like a drop off, right?
They do, and they're very good at that. They've done it so many times. Guardian Ape being one of the best examples. Uh, I also think that the final boss of Elden Ring will not be as challenging as... It'll be really hard. It'll be challenging, right? But I bet there's going to be way harder stuff uh, in the game. Nameless King style. Havel? I mean, ha yeah, there'll be Havels. Like, that game's a great opportunity for Havels. Okay, where, where do I do the jump here? Is it this? Oh, it's the main thing here. Okay. Malik, what's up? I, I, I always forget where I'm supposed to do the thingy. I hate this place. I hate this place so much. What if they're in Breath of the Wild with the boss? Prideable, I think that would be cool. I don't think they're going to do that. It's just not their style. Well, we have to do it, Shrouded, because we have to do the stupid... Oh, wait. We can't We can't get there now, can we? Oh, my God. We can't we? Wait, wait. Malak, what's up? Hi, Malkor. No, this this is this croc this sucks. This is where you get the stupid last cord. Uh Colonel, it does have it does have like light gunpowder as well, so yeah. Bestie, we did miss one. We did not get the prostitute from... We, uh, we did not get... Exactly. We did not get the cord from the prostitute's baby. I don't like killing it. So that means we have to get the workshop cord as our number three. We got Yosefka's cord. Uh, and we got the normal cord from Murgo. I do. I do, Malk. Thank you. There's like a spot you can like trick jump this whole stupid place. He didn't, he didn't do it. Well, Shrouded, if you can tell me where to do it, I'll do it. That's why I don't like to getting this core. It's such a pain in the ass. Wow, okay. Thank you, Shrouded. Hopefully we can get it in the next four minutes. It's cause, cause you weren't here for the whole stream, Melk, except for this last part.
Is this the right place? Where do I do now? Okay, we did it! Doubt the doll outfits here too, so we can wear that when we fight German. This place is very creepy, right? Dream within a dream. It does, Elastar. So what, should we finish tonight, you think, folks? Or should we save German and Moon Presents for tomorrow? Well, Colonel, you don't want to leave now. We're about to do it. We're about to wrap it up. Of course, that means we won't have Bloodborne for tomorrow. No, you're right. It might. It might. I'll have to get. I'll get that downloaded right after the stream. All right, doll mode engaged. It's time to go. Let's go.
some reason I thought that was a window of attack. Clearly not. Looks like the old man still got it, huh? This guy's got old tricks I don't remember. Good ones. Wow! Later, Gleepa. Have a great night. Uh, I think, yeah, Star Steel will probably tomorrow. Uh, we might as well try it one more time, right? Although, yeah, I don't want to keep people here late. We were supposed to wrap a little bit ago. Yes, Camu. Uh, you're correct. We are. His... We decided to go against his current goals. You can choose to have him kill you. Peacefully. Yeah, Barry, but it puts stress on people who can't who can't stay late, you know what I mean? We'll see. We're here now. You know, you smoke Orphan. The German wants a piece. Smoke Lawrence in one draw, even. German's got some moves. Maybe it's better if we do him tomorrow night. Uh, yeah, Bessie, I mean, that's kind of the cool, like, juxtaposition. You know, he's the ultimate hunter, right? Barry, you'll never miss anything. We'll upload it to YouTube. Good night, Azel. Have a great night. We're just going to do it tomorrow because people are leaving. We will do Star Stable after we finish Bloodborne tomorrow night. He probably will go down first try tomorrow. He's not hard. I mean, compared to what we've done, it's not hard. Excellent, Big Boss. That's the way to go, okay? I know that the dungeon is tough, but go that way. Uh... No, no, Bridges one, no more. Not tonight. You can come back tomorrow for the for the conclusion. Yes, of course, Dr. Mata. Just 
So tomorrow night, regular time, 8 CST if you don't know. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, we'll do Gurman, we'll do Moon Presence. We'll talk a little bit about Bloodborne and From Software. And then we're going to play a horse MMORPG, I think, maybe? I'm not sure, but that seems like it might be happening. Yeah, Dr. Ma Listen, Dr. Ma, there are only so many great people to raid, okay? And to think I hesitated. Creator Gaming, thank you so much. Moonlight Butterfly is so hard. You're very late, Creator. You know that. That's okay. Uh, I'll upload it to YouTube and everything. Late Start Artist. Yeah, we're done. We're wrapping things up. Tomorrow night, uh, if you missed Orphan tonight, Late Start Artist, and Lawrence, and Maria, and Abritas, and everything else, I will upload it to YouTube. Okay? I just have to get around to it. In the meantime, you can check out Final Fantasy VII Remake on there. Uh, I am leaving as soon as I figure out who we're raiding. I'm sorry, late start. It's it's the week, you know, the week, the work week. Have a great one, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow, 8 p.m. CST, for the end of Bloodborne. Okay. We still got German, who who still hits pretty hard for an old guy. Uh, Moon presence, ending, and then people have asked for star stable, so we might do that as the second half of tomorrow's stream. Okay, have a great night, everybody, and we will catch you next time. I will see you tomorrow night. Thank you so much for coming, everybody. I hope you enjoyed Bloodborne. There's always more from software games here on this channel, so play it for. We're literally playing. We're literally playing. Okay. I'm not... Uh, we're, we're already playing Souls. We're already playing a Bloodborne tonight, okay? We might do... We might go back to Dark Souls 2 immediately after it. Yeah. Might be a thing. But we do have to do Star Stable at least a little bit tomorrow night. I know I've got lots of people who are waiting to see me play that. Okay. Goodbye. See you tomorrow for the finale. The exciting conclusion of Bloodborne. I'll catch you then. Take it easy, folks. And I appreciate you a ton.